Okay, another one. Another one. Boom, but see, no matter what, he always forgets that I make him look here at home. Let's break down the eye jab or the bill G. All right, Mr. Olson, can I borrow you? All right, what is the objective of the eye jab, right? Kyle, you were asking me a question. So when we take a look at the eye jab, why does the eye jab not work? How, how does it work? How do we make it work? I think that's the, the big question. So the first thing is, what is my objective with this eye jab? My objective with this eye jab is sometimes people say, oh, the eyes are so small, we can't hit them. That comes down to how much you practice, but when I go like that, no matter what, he closes his eyes. So in that moment he closes his eyes or has a flinch, boom. So he, no matter what, boom, you wanna talk about no touch? There's a no touch reaction. The moment he does this, the groin opens up. So we have to understand like Sun Tzu's Art of War, it's a luring into one direction. I want him to look here to go here. The eye jab is a liar, okay? One hand lies and one hand tells the truth. So for example, if he blocks with his rear hand, here, boom, the next hand shoots through. I'm not thinking of trying to score solely with the eye jab. Does that make sense? Because he could be fast, he could change. The other thing the eye jab is it's a probe. I want to find out what his reaction is. That's the thing. So if I'm moving here with the eye, boom, I just throw it out. Do you see? That flinch response. So when would somebody use the eye jab? Because it's obviously not for sports situations. Do you see it in sport or is it only a self Okay, that's a great question. Have you seen Muhammad Ali do his flicker jab? Yes. Okay, so in the sport, Muhammad Ali used to use his flicker jab for range finding. So what he would do is go, oh, pow, he just kind of hears stuff. Pop, pop, pop. You see, he's leaning. And, in, you know, when they talk about a jab, it, that's breaking all rules of a jab and the power because he's leaning, boom, and he's circling. So move with me a little. Pow, pow. He's just circling. Sorry. That's all right. He's just circling like that, right? He's going, pow, pow. So what does, that, what does that make you feel like? Overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, right? Yes. So in that sense, what are you thinking about when I'm doing this? <laughs> Like kind of like getting my hands up, covering my face. Getting your hands up, covering your face. Hundred percent. So when I start going, wah, wah, boom, now I start hitting here. Then I'll fake this and come over the top. So you see how that set that up for you. Right. So in sport, hundred percent. Use that long range jab as a flicker to find the range. So in sport, I'll use that to find the range. So if, if it's a sport situation, right, Kyle? Let's say MMA, maybe or kickboxing, where I have other tools. I'll be going like that, and see when I circle, what does it make him do? makes him circle. So I start to see if I go like this, he's circling. Which way is he circling? That way. So I kick him in the future. Now I get that. It's all set up by the movement. Would an eye jab be for somebody who's never trained before? Or is it something you have to practice 10,000 reps in order to make it work? That's a great question. You've got to practice 10,000 reps. I'm not going to lie to you. Now in a beginner street fight situation, can you poke him in the eye? 100%. So for example, if somebody comes here in a very, uh, comes down on this side so you can see Kyle. Say he grabs me, bang. That doesn't take much practice mm -hmm. because of the range. It depends what kind of fight it is. Is it a duel? Is it like I'm in a street fight? If you're in a street fight, you need to question your, what's happening in your life. Shouldn't be in a street fight, but sometimes you get into an altercation and the guy's another fighter or something. Somebody challenges you, whatever it is. I mean, those days really don't exist so much, but sometimes it happens. But the point is like, if he's a fighter and we both have our hands up, what, what, what's happening. But if somebody just comes and he kind of grabs me, boom, there's the shot over here. He grabs me on this hand, boom, there's the shot over here. So if he grabs me over here, instead of coming around here and doing all this stuff, there's the eyes and there's the groin, right? So what it is, is we're stealing a moment of time by causing a moment of pain and a, or a flinch. But the biggest misconception is, is it a fight ender? It's not a fight ender, it's a moment of time stealer. So in that, you can transition to go forward, or it gives you a moment to escape to gain safety if you're in a super self-defense situation, or maybe it gives you a moment to draw a weapon if you need, whatever the situation may be. So we have to understand the context and what the objective is. But to your first question, if you do choose to make it a weapon and weaponize the eye jab, I highly suggest it, Mr. Olson, we borrow you. Because if we look at it, right, Kyle, if I can get really good, and it's the snake. So the eye jab, or the Bilji, um, it's in Wing Chun, it's in snake style Kung Fu, it's in Taiji, okay? It's in Karate, it's in Filipino martial arts, it's in every single style and system. So if, if it's gotta be something that works that's in every style. But the question is sometimes people think, oh, I'll just eye jab the guy. That's where you could get in a trap. It's how many hours did you spend? How many reps did you spend? How much time did you spend with time and angles and distance? How many times did you actually spend making contact? 
how good is your target acquisition and how well have you practiced it? First under, without pressure, and then under pressure. So a drill that we do is you take a ping pong ball and you hang a ping pong ball from a, a little string and move around, boom, and target that eye jab. Get it to the point that you could target either eyeball, okay, and practice it. But remember, when you're going to this, if I, boom, you, you see what that makes him do? It makes him flinch because the, the eye jab, if you see, comes, boom, it comes this, yeah, it comes like that. It can come like this, it can come over the top, it can come this way, or I can shift around. But it's a very circular, snake-like movement. But the eye jab alone is never alone. So my Sifu always says, one hand lies, one hand tells the truth. It's easy, always it's like a two-headed snake. Always, or you can imagine my foot is the other snake. So if we take a look most of the time, I'll throw one, bang! If he's too slow, he gets hit. But I gotta give him respect, and what I'm starting to see is, see, he put that front hand up. If he hits the front hand up, there's the trap. That's where the pox out comes in for a moment, and I hit him again, boom, into the eyes, right? But you see how it's making him go back? Because once he goes back like this, his base and balance is going which way? Backwards. So it could be I could stop there, I could blast him, I could take him down, I could follow up, or I could just leave the fight. So it gives me that option of which way to go. If he goes with his rear hand, I just zone, like a basketball crossover. I love basketball, pop, pop, right? So I hear, boom, there's the shot to the side. Maybe he blocks with his front, and then he blocks with his rear, and I just float over the top, okay? And I just float over the top. So many times in the Wing Chun forms, you will see this kind of a motion happening. In Taiji, you will see this kind of motions happening all the time. And what it is, is he blocks with the front, blocks with the rear, come over the top. Block with the rear, block with the front, come over the top. Do you see? So you have to practice all those. Okay, so you do whatever you want. Okay, another one. Another one. Boom, but you see, no matter what, he always forgets that. I make him look here, boom. And I come down here. So you see that? Bang. So even if I want to go slow, okay, and you go fast, I'll go slow. No matter what, he doesn't see that. So I don't want to oversimplify it, but you got to spend thousands of repetitions doing it. Most important, your hand has to be super fluid and soft like a whip. None of this. <laughs> it has to go here and then there. And many times, I don't want him to even touch. So you all, did you see how that moves? It moves here and I'm over the top. So train it, get it good, because the man who can't see is a man who can't fight. Steal his eyes for a moment in time. You've stolen his center, you've stolen his balance. And for that moment, you can choose to go forward, go back, escape, or finish. So invest in hitting the eyes. Because most of, importantly, when I do this, what does he give me? Come here, let me work it with you a little. I go like that, what, is, what did that do to you? You know, people talk about no touch. Whoop, when I do that, see, no matter what, whoop, you do that, whoop, whoop, bang, you see that. Did you see it? Yeah. Did you see that one to the balls? I barely did. Okay, now, now you know I'm gonna do the one to the balls, okay? <laughs> you see what happened? Okay, now I'll go slow. I'll yes. go super slow, and you're coming to the eyes, block it, boom, no, oh, boom, there's the shot. Yes. Do you see it? So, it's gotta be like that. It's like that, it's overwhelming, low, high, low, high. So Bruce Lee used to say, put him in the wounded crane. Wounded crane stance is like this. Oh, ah, oh, ah, oh. Nice. Okay, steal their style. Because I don't want to get into a fight and see how good you are. There's <laughs> a really good, a lot of good fighters. But then the other key thing I think you had asked me earlier is how do you functionalize it? Because you have to practice, you have to master, you have to functionalize, you have to maintain a technique. You got to put boxing gloves on, put protective gear on. And the protective gear, get those shop goggles, that are like tight like this, so you can actually touch the eyes and then do it under pressure. Eye jab versus a jab, eye jab versus a takedown, eye jab versus a jab and a takedown and start progressively giving him tools and all you can use is your eye jab in the whole fighting and then you make it good and you know you can get it. Because the number one reason people fail is they don't manage the distance, they don't manage the time, they don't manage the angles and you gotta be able to relax under pressure and make a relationship with your opponent. You see, it's not about you. It's about them. It's about you following them, joining with them, making a connection with them. And if you can do that, it doesn't matter if it's an eye jab, a takedown, whatever it is, that's the master key. Thank you.